Hi everyone, this is Casey with Dondoko Taiko. In late 2018, fellow Taiko member Corey and I began planning a trip to Japan for Dondoko Taiko. This would be a 10-day, 9-city itinerary. We planned extensively for this trip, which would have taken place in August of 2021. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to take the trip yet, but I didn't want all of this information to go to waste, so we will be sharing all our information in a video series titled Explore Japan with us. The information will still be based on our planned trip, but should still be very informative for anyone planning a trip to Japan. I hope you enjoy the information and a look into the planning process. Hopefully, we will all be able to use this information soon when traveling to Japan. Welcome to Episode 4 of the Explore Japan with Us series. This installment covers the Nagaoka portion of the original trip. If you are not going for a sister city's experience, this visit can probably be pared down to one or two days. This part of the trip begins immediately after arrival in Japan. On the planned itinerary, we would be arriving at Nagaoka Station at around 7.30 p.m. The relationship with Nagaoka, the fireworks capital of Japan, represents Fort Worth's most active Sister Cities program, with over 200 youth and adults exchanging each year for programs in sports, culture, and education. Surrounded by hills and mountains, Nagaoka lies in the alluvial plain of the Shinano, Japan's longest river. Nagaoka enjoys distinctive seasonal changes, cherry blossoms in the spring, rich greenery in the summer and fall, and snow in the winter. Nagaoka is renowned for superior rice production and high quality sake or rice wine. Check out the Nagaoka promo video in the description box below for more about Nagaoka. While Nagaoka is more of a rural town compared to Tokyo, there are still quite a few activities to enjoy here. We hope you enjoy the atmosphere of life in Nagaoka. Some of the attractions available include historic sites, museums, shopping, and the opportunity to experience sake tasting, local cuisine, fish markets, the Sea of Japan coastline, and a traditional handmade cutting tools factory. One of the most exciting attractions only happens during the first three days of August. If you are brave, like we are, and are willing to travel to Japan during the summer, you will not want to miss Nagaoka's Hanabi Festival. The Nagaoka Fireworks Festival is held annually from August 1st to August 3rd, along the banks of the Shinano River near Ote Bridge. The fireworks last for a couple of hours and feature many large-scale displays. First started in 1946 as a war damage reconstruction event to mourn the deceased of World War II, the Nagaoka Fireworks Festival in Niigata Prefecture carries on the spirit of Japan through the decades. It's not difficult to see why this display of pyrotechnics is one of Japan's top three fireworks festivals and as many as a million people watch it every year. Besides fireworks, portable shrine and float parades folk dance processions, and toro nogashi, floating paper lanterns down the river, are also major events at the festival. The riverbanks get extremely crowded for this festival, so make sure you go there hours before the official start time to claim a spot. At this time, tickets and a reservation are required for any of the main viewing areas. It is recommended to reserve as soon as tickets become available for any of the best viewing areas usually in June. A link to the festival ticketing website is provided below. Starting with this video, we will be covering some accommodation options for each destination. These are just our preferences, so please feel free to share some of your favorite accommodations in the comments below. In past Dondoko trips to Nagaoka, we have had the opportunity to stay in homes of the residents of Nagaoka. This was a wonderful experience and very educational. Unfortunately, we are not certain that this will be possible during this trip due to COVID-19. In case homestay is not possible, we are researching hotel, Airbnb, and other options for our stay in Nagaoka. Some possibilities besides homestay might include Hotel Metz Nagaoka, which is connected to Nagaoka Station, 
Among the facilities of this property are a 24-hour front desk, a business center, and free Wi-Fi. Another option is Hotaru Inn, which used to be a temple and now serves as an Airbnb location. Hotaru has two bedrooms, one bath, and can host as many as 14 guests. All the other amenities you would expect to be found in a home or a hotel are available. Hotaru Inn is a 20-minute walk from JR Urasa Station. JR Urasa Station is a 12-minute train ride from Nagaoka. No matter which accommodations option you choose, you will need to book your dates as early as possible. Accommodations in Nagaoka fill up very fast during the festival. Nagaoka Station is the main train station in Nagaoka and the stop you will be using when arriving on the Shinkansen. Like many other stations, Nagaoka Station is combined with a shopping mall and offers many other activities including the Kokolo department store, a medical clinic, the Ponshukan Sake Museum, yes, there are sampling flights, a large dining hall, and much more. Although Nagaoka Station is not the biggest station, it can be very confusing with all of the shops and activities, so make sure you stay with your group and use the correct exit. After arrival, you'll be greeted by representatives from the city of Nagaoka. If you are traveling outside the sister city's relationship, make sure you are prepared to go it on your own or contact the city of Nagaoka to hire a local guide. At this point, you can check in, drop off your luggage at your accommodations, and head to dinner. After dinner, it will be time to get a good night's rest. At this time, we do not have an exact itinerary for the Nagaoka dates, as this would be generally provided by Nagaoka or sister cities. For the purposes of this video, I will be sharing part of the itinerary from our last trip in 2013. If you are not traveling as part of a sister cities event, you will probably want to rent a car to make visiting all of the sites much easier. Day two in Nagaoka will start at the Nagaoka Civic Center. The Nagaoka Civic Center, or Chikyu Hiroba, is designed to introduce international travelers to Japan and the city of Nagaoka. Its services include consultations in your native language on a variety of subjects, translation device rental, seasonal events, a mini library, brochures about the area, Japanese lessons, and internet connected computers. After meeting up with your guides, you will board a tour bus bound for the Yoshinogawa Sake Brewery and Museum. Established in 1548, Yoshinogawa is run today by its 19th generation owner, Koji Kawakami. Niigata Prefecture is the largest producing region of premium sake in Japan and is famous throughout Japan for its rice production. As the oldest sake brewery in Niigata, Yoshinogawa is one of the most popular sake breweries. Next, you will make a stop at the Nagaoka Hanabikan, a roadside station and fireworks museum, for lunch and a little shopping. For a quick dessert, you can stop into Iguchi Dango for ice cream mochi wrapped in bamboo leaves. Yum! Your next stop is the Niigata Prefectural Museum of History. This museum is unique in that many of the exhibits are interactive. According to their website, the Niigata Prefectural Museum is intended as a place for visitors to learn about the anthropology, archaeology, folklore, and history of Niigata Prefecture. In addition, the museum is also dedicated to the archaeology of the Jomon period in Japan and its study in Japanese and global context. The museum does offer a guide app for your smartphone. Now for a quick stop at your accommodations to drop off souvenirs and to change for taiko practice. Tonight's last activities will be taiko practice and dinner. Those not playing taiko can explore the Hanabi Festival booths or head back to your accommodations for an early bedtime. Day three in Nagaoka will be like the second day, but you will also need to plan to send the larger portion of your luggage to Kyoto this evening. Because you will be traveling to Sado Island tomorrow for a taiko experience, but ultimately sleeping in Kanazawa, you want to lighten your load as much as possible to make this portion of the trip more mobile. Tomorrow, you will ride two local trains, one Shinkansen, two ferries plus two buses, and two taxi rides. 
you won't have the time or energy for extra luggage. So make sure you pack everything you need for Sato Island and Kanazawa into a weekender or overnight bag this morning so your regular luggage will be ready for shipment today. If you are not staying in a hotel, you will probably need to make arrangements with a local delivery service to send your luggage to Kyoto. Check on the full itinerary linked in the description box below for more options. You will once again start at the Civic Center and start the day with a bus ride to the Sea of Japan coast. Next will be a stop at Yahiko Shrine and maybe take a trip to Mount Yahiko. Yahiko Jinja's origins can be traced back to 657 BC when a great-grandson of the Shinto deity Amaterasu Omikami is believed to have landed in the Hokuriku area and taught residents the skills required for agricultural activities. Not only is Yahiko Jinja itself a signature architectural symbol of Japan, but it is also home to the Shida no Otachi, the longest sword, and a nationally designated important cultural property. The 350 meter stretch of cedar trees running from north to south around the shrine has also been designated as a natural treasure by the prefecture. With Yahiko Jinja at its base, Mount Yahiko evokes a spiritual atmosphere. Cedar-lined hiking trails only add to the ambiance, but it's the spectacular views that the mountain is most famous for, whether it's looking back out over Niigata or towards Sato Island and the Sea of Japan. You can take a ride on the ropeway up Mount Yahiko. For those that might be renting a car, there's a driving course available. The ropeway cars run every 15 minutes and there's a free shuttle bus that takes you from Yahiko Shrine to the ropeway station. Beautiful throughout all the seasons, the ropeway ride is especially popular when the cherry trees bloom. At the peak of the mountain, you will find another small shrine. Take a moment there to soak in the panoramic views of the Niigata Plain and Sato Island. Wander across the plain or rest at the observation deck and head to the cafe for some Japanese cuisine. Lunch today will be at the Nihonkai Yuhi Brewery in the Teradomari district, but there are many other options available in the area. After lunch, take a stroll through the Teradomari fish market or take a quick dip in the Sea of Japan. This area has very nice facilities to change for and wash up after swimming. You will return to downtown Nagaoka to explore the Hanabi Festival and taiko players will have the opportunity to perform with UQ Taiko. For those not performing, feel free to join in the dancing and general festival fun. I hope you enjoyed the Nagaoka Hanabi Festival. Now it's time to return to your accommodations for some rest before tomorrow's trip to Sato Island. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. All videos and resources mentioned are linked in the description box below. See you at the next destination.